Good morning everyone, welcome to church. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house, um, both spiritual and biological mothers. Um, we really appreciate what you do, we appreciate the things that you've, your labour of love in, 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 in the house. Um, I'd like to specifically thank God for four women. Um, I can go on and on and mention names, but I'd like to thank God for the likes of Jackie Lloyd. Um, I'd like to thank God for um, ja Janice Coveney, um, Sandra Baker, and um, Karen Old. Um, in between these four women, I guess there's probably about 70, 80 years or close to 100 years of service in CPC. And it's really encouraging to see the things that you've done over the years. Um, some of these women, you might not see them on the pulpit, but they've done really, really, really great things. So we celebrate you as a church. We appreciate you. We appreciate the, your gifting to the house. And I was going through the stats provided by Mary sometime during the weekend. Quite a lot of our manpower are mothers and women in the church. And I would like to celebrate you all as well. Um, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your labor of love. And thank you for everything you've done thus far. Um, and this is probably just a challenge to the men as well, you know. It's probably time for you to arise and do more. Um, don't, don't, don't let us leave it all to the women to do. But enjoy your day, whatever you get up to. I know the restaurants are probably not open, but I trust the men in the house to give you a proper treat. Um, so, this morning we'll be continuing in our series on discipleship. Um, it's been an interesting one if you haven't been following it, but... Um, we started with the 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 myth of the of of of, of the super saints, um, which Graham preached at the first uh, the first week. Um, the second week was by Michael Collins, and that was disciples go. And last week was Michael Coveney when he talked about taking responsibility. And that's where I'm going to start off from today. Um, I will be talking about the cost of discipleship, but. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for that which you have in store for us. We thank you, Lord, because this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, because your word will come expressly and it will do us good on every side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, like I said, I always start in from something Michael said on Sunday, which kind of resonated with me. Michael was talking about um, believers and disciples and he said there's a difference between believers and a difference between disciples and you cannot be a disciple if you're not a believer but you can be a believer and not be a disciple and there is a huge difference between those two categories of people but what God and what Christ expect of us is that we be disciples that's the whole summary of it his expectation is that we become disciples, not just believers. And that is the good, that's, 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 that's one of the challenges that we have because we have loads of people in the house of God, believers and not disciples. And one of the reasons why people stay believers, we will go into that, but the title of the message is the cost of discipleship. So go with me to Matthew 4, verse 18 to 32. Yes, we're doing church in a different way, it's the signs of the times that we are in. Um, none of us expected it to be this way at the beginning of the year. But you know what? We're going to run with what we've got. And the church is not going to be silent. Nothing is going to change. We're going to do church. And we are not going to let the situation dictate how we relate with God. I was talking to my wife briefly earlier on. And um, I was saying to her, I wonder how, why, how did we, this is just a personal reflection, it's like, do you remember when the, um, the ark was to be built? God told Noah. Do you remember when um, um, uh, you remember, I've forgotten the other story, but basically God told Noah what was going to happen. But it seems like we've been caught on our ways. Mm -hmm. This is my personal conviction. It's just like, None of us knew anything like this will happen. When the famine was going to come in the land of Egypt, God told Joseph. Joseph knew about it. 
and the plan well ahead, you know. But none of us know. We never, we, none of us could have imagined that we would be where we are today. But I'm not going to beat myself and I'm not expecting you to beat yourself either. But it's just a thought that went through my mind and I shared it with my wife. And I just believe that in all of this, Job 22, 29 says, when men are saying, when men are cast down, we shall say there is a lifting up. And I want us to continue to say to ourselves and to say to, the, to our generation, say to the people around us, we shall not be cast down. We will say, we're going to say, we are, there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up coming. Let's not miss that. So going back to my type, going back to the subject of the day, Matthew 4, 18 to 22. It says, while walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and, his, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. That's Matthew 4, 18 to 22. The next scripture I want us to read, there are three foundation scriptures that I'm going to um, make reference to through this message, is Matthew 19, verse 16 to 21. Matthew 19, verse 16 to 21. Like Michael made mention last week, we had a, um, a preacher's meeting, and... Um, We've kind of reminded ourselves to go slow on the scriptures and also just to let you know that I'm using the ESV translation. So if you don't have an ESV translation, um, don't, don't get confused. It's not, it's not my trick Bible. It's not a trick Bible. But 19, Matthew 19 verse 16 to 21. And behold, a man came to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter eternal, if you enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all this I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go and sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. In Luke 57, Luke I said Luke 57, Luke 9, if you ever see Luke chapter 57, please let me know. That will be a proper, proper trick Bible. But Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verse 57 to 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 57 to 62. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, but uh, yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. 
in all of those three scriptures that we've read, there is something that resonates in all of it. And that is the fact that Christ, when Christ calls his disciples or when, when Christ calls the disciples to follow him, there was a cost. There is, there was a cost. The Bible tells us that Simon left his net. The others left their boat. There is always a cost associated to being a believer. This, it's never a free ride. I believe somebody paid a price for you. Somebody paid a price for me. I know that some people were praying for the salvation of my soul. Some people must have prayed for yours as well. And there are things that people did that cost them something for me to be a Christian today. Not neglecting the fact that Jesus Christ gave his life for us. The point of being a disciple is the fact that you are a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ. This term is found in the New Testament, in the Gospels and in the Acts. But in the ancient world, the issue of being a disciple or the topic of being a disciple already existed anyway. You can see the relationship between Samuel and Eli. And Samuel was brought to Eli at, at a very young age. And he basically was following a master, a rabbi. He was, he was, he was following in the footstep of his master. And everything, he was kind of copying the life of his master. So discipleship is not a, a new concept. It's not a new thing. It has always been. But in the New Testament, it's, that's the only time where the word disciple is referred to. It's not referred to in the Old Testament, but the concept is there. But one thing that we see clearly from those passages is the fact that Jesus said, follow me. And I, I've got people in my life that I look up to. I've got people that I could say discipled me or people that I could call that because the concept of being a disciple, at times you need a discipler. And look, Paul says, says, follow me as I follow Christ. And it's a very easy thing for us at times to get consumed by the person that we are following. And forget the fact that that person must be following someone. And I've seen a lot of people over the years, over my years of being a Christian, where it's like, this man of God can do no wrong. This person can do no wrong. No. As long as he's following Christ, yes. But the moment he steps out of line, the moment he steps out of line, and we've got the Spirit of God to know because we also are following Christ. And it's not, I mean, the story of Eli that, I've just, that we referred to a few minutes ago, the Bible, when God wanted to talk to Samuel, when Eli missed it, God did not, God, God, God went, circumvented Eli and went to talk to Samuel. So you could, have a, you could have somebody discipling you that has missed it. But my prayer is that whoever you are following, whoever is your discipler, you will be able to discern whether they are still in tune or they've missed it. And my prayer is that you will follow Christ and not just men. Oh. We're talking about the cost of discipleship. And when we started at the very onset, we talked about the fact that there are so many believers, but not many disciples. And that probably reflects in the fact that 20% of the people you find in church are doing 80% of the job. Or you find that in given, 20% of the people are the one given the 80% of the finances of the church. Because when you are really, really, really a disciple, that paradigm must shift. That must shift. And that is where we're going to with this. That as a believer, as you follow Christ, as you are a disciple, not a believer, as you are a disciple and you're following Christ, you are, your entire being is consumed. And there's a price to pay. There is a price to pay. And I guess that's the reason why many people stop at being believers and not disciples. Because there is a cost. There is a cost. The disciples left. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 20. It says, it says that they left their nets 
in verse 20 says they left their nets. And in verse 22, the Bible says they left their boat and their father just to follow Christ. I've been, I've been um, a financial trader for the last few, well, probably consistently for a year now. And one thing that traders will always tell you is the fact that is the risk to reward ratio. What's the risk to the reward? What's the risk to the reward? So if you've got if, if you've got a trade or if you want to enter a trade and the risk is one and the reward is 10, that's a good trade to take. If you want to enter a trade and the, the risk is one and the reward is one, mm, no, because the chances are you're going to lose trades. So if I've got 10 trades and I lose five, and the risks to reward is one to five. So I've lost five trades and I win five trades. So I've got five times five is 25 and five that, I, that, that I've lost is five. Tw take five out of 25, 20. So I'm, 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 I'm a winner. There's always a risk and there's always a reward. And most of the time, if not all of the time, the risk always precedes the reward. If they, they, they are, they are, what am I risking? What am I going to lose doing this? And bear in mind that there's always a reward as well. At the end of the day, when you read the scriptures like we've read, Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That is the reward. But they had to follow. They had to pay a price. But there was a reward that they will be fishers of men. In the same, when we read in, in, in Luke, the, re, the young follower, uh, the, um, the, um, the rich young man in Luke chapter 9, the Bible says that Christ told him that, sell all you have and follow me. But before that, he said to him, do the commandments. And he said, oh, look, I've, I've done all of that. He said, okay, then there is another thing that you could do. So at times when we are at the cost of discipleship is, you know, if, if he had not done all the commandments, that would have been what he needed to do to follow Christ. But at that point, I said, we could do that. I said, oh, I've, I've done it. He said, okay, well, then there's another price for you to pay. There's another cost. Sell all you have and follow me. And what we will also notice from... Um, from Matthew chapter 4 and 20 and 22, the cost varies from individuals to individuals. What God expects of you might not be what God expects of me. The cost at this point of your Christianity might not be the same with mine, but bear in mind that there's a cost at every point. And we cannot afford to make a doctrine of what God is asking of us at this point in time. That is a dangerous place to be. I've seen preachers and I've seen um, I've seen um, um, what is it called? No, denominations. I've seen denominations say that you know what, if you don't do it this way, then you can't serve. Or if you don't do it this way, then you're not proving your ministry. No, we all don't have to pack up shop. God, when Christ was talking to the disciples, they said, you know, follow me. Some left their nets, some left their fathers, some left this, some left that. So the price and the cost of discipleship varies. Don't let make a doctrine of one kind of cost. But, yeah. The risk might be in the form of what we do or what we choose not to do. So you might decide not to do something, that might be the cost. And you might, be, uh, you might decide you want to do away from something, that might be the cost of your discipleship at that point in time. I didn't know how dry I was until I got around people that were wet. You know, the, like I said, the risk if, if, is, is, might be in what we choose to do or what we don't do. The risk that you took today or in the past might be a stepping stone for, a greater, for greater things for you. So the price you paid today it might not be real, it's, it's definitely not what you'll be expected to pay tomorrow, but in March it will be a stepping stone for what you want to do tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. 
the writer of Hebrews was talking about having been surrounded by a cloud of witness. Let me go there. There is something I want to draw from there. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, basically what we're saying there is, it says every weight and sin, we know what sins are. We know what sin is. You're not supposed to be meddling with sin. But he said weight. And what is a weight? A weight in that context is something that probably in time past you've leaned on. Something that, or it might be even somebody that was been, that's been a blessing to you in time past. But now, hanging around that person is not doing you any good. It's just like a weight that is drawing you down. It says, let us lay aside. That might be a price to pay. That might be one of your costs of being a disciple. I just, I can't hang around you anymore. It was good for the season. It was good for a while. But I've got to let go that I might get up to my next level. And that is one thing that I believe we need to be very um, aware of. The risk is not... The risk is not a one-time thing. Every day we are presented with the opportunities to take risk. Every day. The Bible says we should take up our cross daily and follow him. So there's an opportunity every day. There is something, there is a risk and there is a reward. Trust me, everyone that has followed Christ, like Jesus said to, you know, to Peter, when Peter said, look, we've left everything. We've left everything to follow you. And he said, look, there is a reward for you. In this present world and in the world to come there is a reward there is a reward there is a reward we should not get to the point where the risk and the cost of discipleship overwhelms us to the point where we refuse to do anything by staying safe or playing it safe you're not actually playing it safe you're not playing it safe in any shape or form you're just basically sitting on all you can for how long you can for and, you know, it's just going to blow up in your face over time. But let's step out. Let's pay that price. Let's pay that price of being a disciple and see Christ glorified in our lives. One of the things that, you know, like it's Mother's Day today. And you cannot but make reference to some of the heroes in the Bible, some of the women in the Bible that have done exploits for Christ. You know, the Bible talks about um, Joanna in Luke 8, 3. She was one of the women that Christ healed. And she, let's go to Luke chapter 8, verse 3. And she used everything that she had to serve Christ. She was one of the three women that went to meet Christ or went to the tomb on Resurrection Sunday. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. Luke chapter 8. And we will come to Luke chapter 4 as we round up. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. He says, And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others, provided for them out of their means. You know, the quite other women, um, Michael was talking about Tabitha last week Sunday and this woman did exploit even one of the, the the cost to them because the rabbis at the time said that women should not socialize with men who are not their relatives or travel with them you know these women and men shouldn't be seen together but this woman that's one of the cost of their discipleship the broke social norms the new Christ was the new who Christ was and that was one of the things that, you know what, we're going to stick, this is a cost, this is, we, 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 we risk being isolated, we risk being called names, and they stuck to their God, and they followed Christ, they gave everything that they had, just to be a disciple of Christ. And I, like I said at the very onset, I thank God for the women of the house, the women that did everything, and still doing things amongst us. And it's, it, it, when you read in Luke chapter 24, and the men were locked up in a house somewhere 
And these three women set out, set out to go to the tomb of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what must have been going through their mind? Can you imagine what they must have? I can't even, even thinking about it now in our current climate to let for women to step out in that format. Not to talk of back in that in those days. They knew where they were going to, they knew that the stone was rolled on the tomb. They knew that they were gonna face a challenge anyway. They knew that the society even did not even accept them to do that. But they still step out. They stepped out of their comfort zone. They took a risk and that was a massive, massive risk they took. And what would what was the reward? They got there and everything fell in place. But if you go back, and this is not, this is not, this is not, this is not, this is not slagging the men, because obviously, as you can tell, I'm a man. But it's just stating the scriptures as it is. If you go to Luke chapter 24, in just from verse, from verse, um, from verse nine, it says, you know, from verse eight, it says, and they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all those things to the eleven. And to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the, uh, to the apostles. So the guys were all locked up somewhere and these women took a great risk. What risk are you and I going to take? So I celebrate the women amongst us but if you go further down in verse 13 the Bible talks about the other two disciples, guys, they went away from Jerusalem. They were on their road to Emmaus, you know, and they were deliberating amongst themselves. You know, my prayer is that every man going in, in the opposite direction, you know, we will turn back. We will encounter Christ the same way these guys encountered Christ. And they decided to come back and tell the same tale, the same story as the women did. Kind of they collaborated the story of what the women were telling because they encountered Christ on the road to emails. And as we go on as a church, as we continue to talk about discipleship, I know that there are so many things that we are battling with. There's so many things that I'm thinking about. There's so many things that I know that I'm supposed to be doing. Like I said at the very like I said during the course of the message, where I'm thinking why like god said god said uh, to, said um about abraham he said you know i will not do anything without consulting abraham when sodom and gomorrah was to be struck off and lot was in there god still told abraham i mean maybe i'm being hard on myself but i'm thinking as a disciple as a christian in this current climate how did i miss it to the point where everything that is happening around and there was, it was you know we are all locked down now <laughs> it's like how did we not even know how did i not even know you know but that's just me that's just me but like somebody said oh like i said maybe god, it's not even maybe god must have been talking god must have been talking god was talking we obviously i obviously wasn't tuned enough. I obviously wasn't taking the risk required to be that disciple that loves the master to the point where you know what exactly is happening. And this is a challenge to you and I, that upon our watch, we will pay the price to be true disciples. We will not stop at being believers. We will go that extra mile. We will not be afraid of the fear of missing out. Because that's one of those things that stop us from being true disciples. We want to be identified with what is happening around us. One of the other things that make us miss out of being real followers and through the true disciples of Christ is the fact that we've begun to fit in instead of standing out. We've begun to blend in instead of standing out. Can you imagine the same Peter that said, and followed Christ, all of a sudden, it got to a point in his life when he said, that man, I do not know him. That man, I do not know him. He didn't even say, oh, um, 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 um. He blatantly 
swore that I do not know this man. The same Peter that gave his net, that, that took, that, you know, that, 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 that sacrificed his net, was the same Peter that started walking on water and all of a sudden he began to sink. It happened before, it will happen again. But I'm just saying that upon our watch, that we step up, we do more, we challenge ourselves, we begin to speak to ourselves and say to ourselves, bro, what are you doing? Bro, what are you doing? We are locked down now, so there is no excuse. There is no excuse. There is no train to catch. There is, there, is, there, is, there is nothing that is an excuse now. Read that book. Pray that prayer. Pay more. Do more. Challenge yourselves more. Be that better person. Because this, will, this might not happen again. This might not happen again. Maybe this is another message where God is telling us, you know what, this is an opportunity for you to make good and redeem the lost time. Don't let this time go by. Forget the lose. Forget the toilet roll that you don't have. Forget the paracetamol that you, you don't have. Don't let that overwhelm you. But just stay focused. Stay focused. When we take our eyes off the ball, the same way the disciples on their road to emails take, took their eyes off the ball. When you take your eyes off the ball, you forget the reward. The price that you've paid. At times we miss the mark. We miss the mark. And I pray that will not be our portion. Everything that we need to do to bring us back to that road of being true disciples, my prayer is that we begin to do those things. We'll come back to our first love. We come back to those things that made us strong. We come back to challenging ourselves. We come back to the place where there's fire, fire in our meetings. We come back to the place where some of those things that the disciples did of old, it will not be, it will, it will not be strange things amongst us. So my prayer for you this morning is that everything you need to do Every relationship you need to break, every decision you need to make, every risk you need to take, that God will grant you the strength to take that decision in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not in any way step down. You are stepping up. You are stepping up. We are stepping up as a church. We are stepping up. It's a new season. It's a new season. We will follow you. We will follow you all the way. We will be real disciples. And we will disciple ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.